Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus. The fundamental theorem of calculus has two parts. The first fundamental theorem of calculus, or the first part of the theorem, uh, one of, it says if we take a function, which is a, uh, a, or take a function, and then take its derivative, if we integrate the derivative function, the derivative of the of the function, so we start with this, say we start with this blue function here, take its derivative, the red one, to get a new function, f of x, little f of x, which is big f prime of x, and we integrate it from a to b, it turns out to be the total change in the, the uh, this function here, the antiderivative of the thing we're integrating, that is, it's f of b minus f of a, capital F of b minus capital F of a. So this is what the fundamental theorem says, uh, at least in this part, and what this does, it gives us an alternative way, an indirect way of finding a value of a definite integral. Remember, a definite integral is by definition a limit of Riemann sums, but it's very, very difficult to find the value of a, deriv of, a, of a definite integral that way directly from the definition in almost every case. But if, so if we want to find an exact value, here's what we want to do. We want to take our function f, little f, which is right here. So here I've given an example. And we want to find an antiderivative for it. Here's an example right here. And then we take this big F and evaluate it at b minus that big F evaluated at a. So that big F uh, evaluated it, you see right now B is 2. So we evaluate that at 2, we get about 6.33. Then we evaluate it at A, 0.2, put that in here, we get approximately 2.23 for a difference of about 4.1. And if we integrate over here this function from 0.2 to 2, we also get 4.1. So that illustrates this here. What we also get here is another way of visualizing the, uh, the definite interval. So we have two different illustrations for this. On the left, we see the function that we were trying to integrate, the integrand, that's the little f, and that's graphed in red here. And we see the integral as a net signed area between the curve and the x-axis. So it's the green area minus the red, and we've seen this in our in our videos before. But if we if we uh, look at this, whether we're going to the right or to the left, but this works out. So when we're going to the right area. Uh, when we're going left to right, in other words, a is less than b. Areas above the axis are in green; they add to the integral, and areas below the axis are red, and they subtract from the integral. But if we're going the other way around, where b is to the left of a, b is less than a, then it's reversed, so the areas above the axis subtract from the integral, and so they're red here, and the green ones below the axis are going to add to the integral. So let's say we go back to there, for example. Now, how can we see this in the picture over here? So what we want to do is we want to find an antiderivative for this. So I allowed GeoGebra to find an antiderivative, and then I added this constant c. Because if we if we shift this up, any of these uh, functions, if we shift vertically up or down, all of these functions here with different constants here at the end, constant terms here, are going to have the same derivative. If you think about it a minute, they have the same shape at a particular point, so they're going to have the same slope. So, for example, right here, that's if we drew the tangent line and shifted it, it would be the same slope on that tangent line because the tangent line would just be shifted up, up and down, but it wouldn't be rotated, so it would have the same slope. Okay, so anyway, there's not just one antiderivative, but our entire family of them, and it turns out it doesn't matter what we pick for C. This is set up here where it shows you a horizontal line here at whatever whatever C is, like that. Let's just say we put it at uh, one and a half for now, that's fine. Okay, but what the um, fundamental theorem is telling us is that we just take the Y value above B on the antiderivative function, 
and the y value above a and subtract those two, we get the value of the integral. So we can see that as a vertical distance. It's the distance of this vector. I've got this set up so that if, if that distance is, if that difference is positive, in other words, f of, big F of b is bigger than big F of a, so we get a positive value here. This will be a green vector pointing up, whereas if I just b to where it's uh, more, more negative area here, more area below the axis than above, more red than green area, on this picture on the left, that's going to give us a y value uh, at b that's below the y value at a on the graph of the antiderivative. And again, that, that's going to be the same amount no matter which, which antiderivative we pick. And that appears now as a vertical distance here, uh, but going down this time. So it's a signed vertical distance. So the length of that vector is our actual derivative. And so this gives you two different uh, interpretations, and this should be uh, accurate whether we are going to the left or right. So this gives you two different visualizations of that integral. If we're looking at the original graph of the integrand, it is a net signed area, greened area minus red area on the graph on the left. If we look at the graph of the antiderivative of what we started with, the integrand, the thing we're integrating was over here, this uh, quadratic polynomial. If we take the antiderivative of that, which is here, any antiderivative, then we can see the integral as being a vertical distance. So area on the left, vertical distance on the right. So it gives you two nice but different uh, visualizations and that gives you a nice connection uh, between those two different graphs and that's what that fundamental theorem of calculus allows us to do, at least one of the things that it allows us to do. One of the things that we will be doing now when we want to find these values exactly is we have to be able to come up with this formula for the antiderivative given the formula for the derivative. Of course, first we need to be able to go the other way, go forwards before we go backwards. We need to be able to take the function here, take its derivative and find the formula here, and then we need to be able to do that backwards now. Take a formula like this and find an antiderivative here. So then there will be some, some amount of time, a couple units in my class where we spend some time talking about how we go back and forth with those formulas. But if we can ever get our hands on the formula, then it's pretty easy to find the uh, definite integral exactly. We just take this formula here, plug in the top number, get a number out, plug in the bottom number in place of x, get a number out, subtract. And we can do that in an exact way as well. Of course, the, the numbers that are given here are perhaps decimal approximations in some cases, but we could get exact values in that way. Okay, I hope you found this enlightening and useful for you. Uh, this is a GeoGebra sketch that you can download from GeoGebra's website. And so um, you can see that um, you can actually change the formula and you can change the values of A and B and C and uh, experiment with this a little bit with uh, functions of your own choice. Hope you enjoy it. Bye-bye.